So while I'm working on my son's kit, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick repair on mine because I've got a trip coming up this weekend and, well, my back plate is coming apart. So one of the things that I mentioned in my kind of retrospective video is this is one of the problems that I had with the adhesive and the Chicago screws. This is actually an automotive panel bond adhesive and I don't know if you can see on this screw but I actually scuffed up the, the, the back side of the Chicago screw real good and I did the same thing with the aluminum back plate and it still popped off. Uh, you know, I, I bent over or shrugged my shoulders or something and I guess I put enough stress on it that it popped off. Uh, and it pulled the Chicago screw loose which caused the part of the back plate to, to pop up funny. Um, on this side over here, it didn't, it didn't do that. This is actually JB Weld. But one of the problems that I'm having on some of this stuff is that the screws are tearing through the duck cloth even where they're grommeted. So what I'm going to do while I've got this thing apart is right here in this area, I'm going to cut a strip of aluminum, punch three holes in it, so that I can then attach something like this, attach that to there, and give these panels a little bit better reinforcement. This one actually goes down here. Since I knew I was going to add a backing plate to this to prevent it from tearing through the duct cloth, I went ahead and took some measurements for the plate before I even got started. Grounded the old adhesive off of the backing plate and then the same thing off of the screw head without grinding my fingers. I cut an inch and a half by inch and a half plate and used the same angle grinder to scuff up the edge and then drilled a hole that was not quite big enough for the Chicago screw to go through, so I had to enlarge it eventually. A little bit of JB Weld and hardener mixed together real good and then stuck to the back of the plate and stuck the plate on the back plate and then clamped it for, I guess I let it sit for about 15 minutes. took some 16 gauge aluminum, measured it and marked it, cut it out, and then rounded the corners. Um, the body doesn't like pokey things, remember. Cut the corners with the metal shears to round them off a little bit and then ground them down with the angle grinder. Marked the center so I could drill the hole. Then drilled the hole a little too small. Stuck it on the center post so I could mark the outside post. Marked it and then, listen carefully, that popping sound you heard was me pulling the center Chicago screw off through the adhesive. Again, Chicago screws, this adhesive, and side torsion don't seem to get along. Anyways, JB welded it back up, and while I was waiting for it to dry, I finished drilling the plate, gave it some curve, and stuck the backing plate on, and then I actually stress tested this a little bit. It seems to hold a lot better than it did before. And then while I was in the kit, I went ahead and put the one on the bottom. So what started out as a simple, I broke my kit and I needed to fix it before the trip this weekend, has sort of turned into me verbally thinking my way through the fastener options that I used and the fastener options that I will use. Uh, I talked a little bit about this in my retrospective, but considering I'm getting ready to start my second vest now that I've actually got the vest done, I'm getting ready to start attaching plates to it, and I had to repair this one. I thought I'd go over what I found the strengths and weaknesses of the different fasteners to be. My kit is actually held together with a combination of a couple of different things. The plates are mostly held on with sticky back industrial strength Velcro. It's got peel off and sticky. This stuff is incredibly, incredibly strong and incredibly sticky. The problem that I'm finding is, is that as you peel it off and put it on and peel it off and put it on and peel it off and put it on, eventually it wears off. As long as you're not putting on anything that you've got to worry about, you should be fine. Um, currently what we do with a lot of this stuff is we, we put the 
We put one side on the back of the plate, and then we sew the other side, or we usually use um, uh, sew-on Velcro for the other side, because this stuff is a pain to sew through. It'll gum the needle up quick, fast, in a hurry. Uh, so we'll sew one side onto the cloth, and then we'll sticky the other side onto the back of the plates, and we use that as an attachment system. Um, that was the preliminary thing that we've worked with, and what we've gone to with a lot of the soft parts on the legs and knees and stuff like that. The second thing that we use to attach most of our kits are Chicago screws, and or what they're called screw posts in some places. Uh, Chicago screws are pretty common in leather, term and leather thing, leather working. Uh, this particular group right here is aluminum. Originally, what I was planning on doing when I started my kit was welding the aluminum Chicago screws to the back of the plate, punching grommets in my vest, and then attaching them that way. Uh, what I discovered is, is I'm a bad TIG welder. Wait, I didn't discover that. I knew that. Um, the aluminum Chicago screws have real fine threads, and they mess up really, really easily. This, uh, this turned it to be kind of a an imperfect solution because it was so easy to damage if you cross-threaded them or you messed them up or... Heat, well, heat warped them. Uh, the other problem that I find is is that the backing either side is this tiny little area and so under the wrong tension they come off very easily as you will see or have seen in the video where I'm repairing my kit. In fact I break one while I'm repairing my kit. So this started out a really good idea and if I was able to successfully weld them they worked really really well. If I was not able to successfully weld them they didn't work very well at all. Uh, in fact, they borderline useless. Uh, I have a solution for that now, though. That solution will also let me use steel Chicago screws. Uh, steel Chicago screws are much sturdier and much more durable, and the threads are way more useful. Uh, these are Chicago screws I use for my bandoliers, so ignore the fact that they're different colors. Uh, the solution that I have for those will also make a couple of other things much easier. And what I've done with those is I bonded the Chicago screws to the back of a plate. Uh, this particular bond is two-part epoxy. Uh, I'll get into some of that here in a few minutes. And then punch grommets in the piece and go. What I've discovered about these is as long as it's a piece that's not subject to any sort of side-to-side -side torsion or torquing, that works pretty well. For instance, the shoulder bells worked great. Uh, they, there's no there's no stress there, so they held they held very well. Uh, worked out pretty well, and I'm very happy with that solution in some spots. I'm not so happy with that solution in others. Something that came across the dented helm forums, I think that's what it's called, uh, Boba and Django type cosplay forums, is jewelry pin backs. Got these on Amazon, and they are the same type of pin backs that you use on swag type pins. Uh, they glue on and then they come with these little rubber backings that put on there. Uh, my preference is going to be to use locking pin backs. I have the same concerns with the pin backs that I did with the Chicago screws and the other fastening methods that that's such a small surface area. If there's any sort of pull or torque on it, they may come loose. Another attachment system that I've seen come up quite frequently is the use of snaps. Uh, you can get these snaps on Amazon, you can get them at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, pretty much any of those type of places. Uh, the nice thing about snaps is they're really, really easy to set. Uh, I have the same concern with snaps that I have with Chicago, attaching the Chicago screws. Basically, any place that you have a small surface area that you try and bond, if you put any sort of stress on them at all, I'm afraid that they'll come loose. I have gone through as I break my kit and have to make repairs and started cutting aluminum plates. They're just small inch and a half, inch and a half square plates. And what I do is I take the Chicago screw back, push it through, and this is in the video how I repair it. I didn't drill this hole big enough apparently. Uh, anyways, just pretend that it works. Um, I push it through the back like this. And then I adhese a whole plate and clamp that to the thing. And what I'm discovering so far is that doing that gives me a lot more surface area and it resists pulling the fastener 
off of the back of the aluminum plates. Now, the nice thing about this is, is that you can make these repairs without having to worry about messing up your paint job with a welder. Um, I could go through and weld all these. When I do my son's armor, I am going to use this system, but I'm going to weld the plates to the back of the armor because then I don't have to worry about messing the, the screws. Now, this plate will work for snaps. It would work for Chicago screws. With a smaller hole, it would work for jewelry pin backs. It would work for a lot of things. Uh, I think that this is the system that I'm going to try to use down the road exclusively for attaching with any sort of mechanical fasteners. Now that I've touched on the mechanical fasteners, I'm going to kind of talk about the adhesives and chemical fasteners that I used in building my kit and what I discovered to be the strengths and weaknesses of the different ones. Uh, a large majority of my kit is currently held together with JB Weld, JB Weld, or JB Weld Quick. Uh, functionally the same thing, I think that the Quick has a little less uh, pound per square inch fastening holding power, but it's fairly insignificant in the grand scheme of things And this. Uh, the nice thing I like about it is, is that it sets up really, really fast. I, I usually give it about 10 to 15 minutes clamp time, whereas I let the standard JB Weld clamp overnight. Uh, seems to do a pretty good job. I actually have access to what is a fairly expensive uh, chemical gun from, this one's from SEM, 3M makes the same thing, that dispenses a two-part chemical, uh, everything from seam sealer to adhesives, um, and I've used this stuff, it's, it's expensive, I mean, it's really, really expensive, and to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't found it to be any better than some of the other alternatives in most instances. Uh, so, I'll stick with using this on the Mustang, and I'm not going to bother using this on the Mandalorian kit anymore, particularly since these things dispense with a special tip that mixes it all up. Um, all of the chemicals that I use for fastening and adhesing are two-part chemicals. Uh, there's, you know, there's a hardener and a base chemical. This, the JB Weld, uh, what I do not have here with me right now, but one of the things that I have used is a two-part epoxy that dispenses in a single tube. I get them at Walmart or Lowe's. They're about $5 a tube. Uh, last a fair bit. Uh, they, they work pretty well, too. In fact, these, these here are held on with that chemical epoxy. Uh, pretty well, works pretty well, but it's subject to the same thing. If I torque them sideways too hard, they pop off. Like I said, I'm not even going to try and pretend like I'm any sort of expert on all of this stuff. I've used a fair bit of it in a bunch of different projects, everything from automotive to cosplay now. You know, I've had some good success with some of them and not so good with others. And then vice versa in different applications. So once again, just me speaking out loud about what I've discovered to work or not work for me. Hope it helps.